leptospirosis, that's how it's pronounced. Uh, it, it's a bacterial disease of the kidneys that dogs get from drinking water that might be contaminated with urine from a rodent. Animals that are called reservoir hosts, these are animals that get leptospirosis, but they don't get sick from it, and they shed it in their urine. So it used to always be considered a rural disease that dogs would get it from urine from raccoons or skunks. But over the last, say, 10 years, it's become more and more of an urban disease, mainly because of rat and, and, and mouse urine. And it was a disease that we would see, at least at our clinic, we'd maybe diagnose it maybe once a year. And um, most often it was from people who had mice or rats in the backyard. They would just let the dog go out there or, or if they went upstate and the dog drank water from a pond that might've been contaminated with urine from raccoon. But apparently in the last week or so, there's been about four or five dogs uh, that have become infected with lepto. I know of two of them that have died uh, from it. Um, and it's been traced back to a, a dog run in McCarran Park. So most likely this is mouse or rat urine uh, that's contaminating. It's, it's been so moist on the ground lately. Um, lepto lives in, in, in moist environments. Um, and I think all the dogs are, who have gone to this park or have been exposed, I would think. Um, it's, a, it's a bad disease when, when dogs get lepto, 40% um, of them die. And of the dogs that get better if we treat them early, um, many of them have chronic problems with their kidneys or their liver. Um, it's also potentially contagious to people. It gets spread um, to dogs. Mostly they get it by drinking water, but can also come in through their paws, walking on the street if there's rat urine there, especially if there's a little break in the pad. It's contagious to people also. So if you come in contact with a, a dog's urine um, that was infected with, with lepto and you have a break in your skin, it could be con potentially contagious to people as well. Um, there is a vaccine against it. Um, the vaccine seems to cause more reactions than any other vaccine that we give. Maybe rabies also gives reactions, but lepto and rabies are probably a tie. And the number of dogs that really don't feel well for a few days after they get the vaccine, probably about maybe about 20% of the dogs the day after don't eat, but then they usually come along. Um, so up until now, we were always kind of giving lepto as a, it, we would discuss it with everyone, but we would kind of pick and choose which dogs we think might benefit from it. So for example, if you had like a little chihuahua that just walks around the street and, you know, never goes to the bar, we might not vaccinate that dog just because we worry about the dog not eating, not feeling well. But with the recent outbreak, we're recommending that pretty much every dog get the vaccine to try and pr protect them and also to try and stop the outbreak. Um, signs of lepto in a dog um, usually starts around two days, but it can be even as long as two weeks after exposure. Uh, they don't feel well. I mean, they stop eating. They sometimes, if you look at the whites of their eye, turn, they turn a little jaundice, they get a little yellow. Sometimes they have bloody urine, and that reflects the changes that they might have in the liver. That's what caused the jaundice and the bloody urine because it affects their, their kidneys. Um, they stop eating, they become, they start to tremble. Um, they become pretty quickly, pretty lethargic and, and go downhill pretty quickly. <clears throat> if it's caught early, um, we can treat them with an antibiotic. Uh, doxycycline seems to work really well um, for just a two week course. And the dogs, especially if it's caught early, get better. The day before yesterday, I had a dog come in <clears throat> that was perfectly healthy. It was actually a pre-spay exam and it was a little French bulldog and took blood and the liver enzymes are really high and the kidney value is real high and the dog doesn't seem sick. Um, so we're gonna just empirically start this dog on antibiotics and plus we're gonna run some, some blood tests to see if the dog does have, have lepto. Uh, the tests that are done are, are blood tests and urine tests. Um, there are two different blood tests. One looks for antibodies against the bacteria, but that can take up to two weeks before the antibody levels go up after exposure. And the other test is a, it's a PCR test where they're actually looking for the organism itself in the urine and the blood. And that test is pretty accurate and it only takes maybe about three or four days after exposure before it would be a valid test to run. 